I'm going to go ahead and get started. So hi, I'm Ben. Uh, I'll be hosting the webinar. Uh, we're glad to have everyone here joining us today and excited to have the opportunity to talk about the latest technology in the Mitogen catalog, which is the crystallophores, pre-screening and phasing reagents from polyvalent. Uh, we've got a group of experts on the webinar that have been involved in both the development, testing, and research, as well as the commercialization of this technology. And so they've got uh, real world experience with this technology and it's used in the lab to do incredible science. So I'm gonna give a brief outline of how this presentation is going to flow, uh, just a brief agenda and workflow, and then some minor housekeeping. So uh, the plan is to introduce uh, ourselves individually and then we will provide a brief uh, presentation that's been pre-recorded. Afterwards, we'll have a short Q&A where anyone can ask any questions that they'd like. Um, I ask everyone who is not speaking to mute themselves and keep their cameras turned off. And during the presentation, if you do have a question, feel free to indicate that in the chat box. You can either chat it directly to me, Ben, or to uh, everyone in the group. And we'll try and address those after the presentation. Great. So who am I? So I am Ben Apker. I am the Chief Operating Officer here at Mitogen. And Mitogen's focus is on the development of novel technologies for crystallography. So crystallization, sample management, harvesting, cryocooling, uh, sample handling, all the way through data collection. And so we've, our roots are founded in 2004 by physics professor Robert Thorne at Cornell University. We developed a novel approach to crystal handling. So a polyamide loop, the microbounce or micro loops that replaced nylon loops and improved how easily crystals could be harvested and how well they could be cryocooled and ultimately the data quality that you get from those crystals. We have a lot of focus on uh, improving vitrification and sample handling and cryocooling and have built out our product portfolio to include some instrumentation, but as well, uh, we've had all of the upstream products for crystallization, which are crystallization screens, crystallization plates, and uh, all the materials you need to grow your crystals. We've been very excited to announce a partnership here with Polyvalent and their Crystal 4 technology, which is upstream, upstream mm -hmm. slightly for some of the crystallization screens. So it's a pre-screening reagent and they're going to speak to you about the capabilities of that here. Uh, so we've got three experts with us. We have Eric, Francois and Christian. Uh, Francois and Christian are together on Christian's screen. So at this time, I'm going to hand it over to Eric, allow Eric to introduce himself and what his knowledge of the technology is. And then after Francois and Christian's introductions, I will provide the presentation. Thank you. So hello, everybody. So I'm Eric Girard. Uh, I have been trained in, uh, in physics and chemistry. Uh, in fact, I did my PhD at the Structural Life Biology Institute in Grenoble, in France. Um, then, after my PhD, I spent uh, five years at the Synchrotron Soleil near Paris, uh, working on the MX beam line Proxima 1. Uh, in 2007, I moved back here in Grenoble, uh, and mainly my two main topics are related to the use of high pressure in biophysics, and obviously the use of lanthanide complexes in structural biology, on which I devoted a large part of my career, uh, leading to the discovery of the Crystal of Four family in collaboration with the team of uh, Olivier Maury and Francois. So I think I can pass the microphone to Francois <laughs> now. Yeah, so hello. So my name is uh, Francois Riobé. So I'm a chemist. Uh, so my training was uh, initially uh, mostly on organic chemistry, in particular the preparation of uh, molecular precursor for molecular material. So I, I also actually did some uh, crystallography during my thesis, but not the same kind as you guys, so with uh, less uh, issue <laughs> than uh, for uh, proteins. Uh, but so, I mean, I understand a bit the, the tricks uh, in this uh, field as well. And so then I did uh, several postdocs, so mostly on the, the use of supramolecular interaction in order to, to create uh, properties at the material stage. So either uh, induction of uh, chirality or uh, luminescence property. So then 
I was mostly um, yeah, put a, a step in a step in the, the world of uh, photophysical property of materials, and that's where I was recruited in 2013 in the group of uh, Olivier Mori. So our team main uh, interest uh, was at this time the, the preparation of uh, lanthanide complexes for uh, biological imaging. And uh, actually, there was at this time already an ongoing project with a biocrystallographer in Grenoble. And so I was involved in this project. And I was uh, actually, yeah, I was in charge of the synthesis of the, um, at this time, luminescent uh, lanthanide complexes for, for uh, uh, phasing of a protein crystal. And uh, we get, uh, we obtained the, the first generation of crystallophore with a nucleation property as well. So. Thank you. So thank you for joining us. My name is Christian Chappelle. I'm the coordinator for the polyvalent team. Uh, I've been st I, I study uh, at the inter interface of uh, organic chemistry and biochemistry a long time ago now. And the uh, uh, polyvalent project is a way for me to, uh, to join some skills uh, that I uh, uh, strengthened during my uh, my previous jobs in the in the, in the industry and uh, the, the, the my uh, interest for for all uh, the mechanism uh, in the biological world uh, the, the more we uh, we are understanding we or we start to understand the way crystal is working the more we are convinced that uh, this kind of tool will help structural biologists. So uh, this is why we decided to found uh, Polyvalent. Polyvalent is a science-based company and uh, we are not uh, focused on, 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 on making money. We are <laughs> focused on making and improving uh, yeah. your results. This is the only uh, goal of Polyvalent. And uh, this is why we decided to make this webinar because there are, there are new developments, we want to share them with you. And uh, there is a sh very short presentation, only five minutes, uh, that has been recorded with, uh, with uh, one of uh, Polyvalent Salary. And uh, we will then be back for, to answer to your question. Great. So, then <laughs> great so i will play the video i just wanted to add that uh it, it's great to have polyvalin as part of the mighty gym product offerings i think the two companies vision for enabling the science being done in the research labs uh directly overlaps uh, crystallography is a niche market i don't think anyone expects to become millionaires in this space <laughs> we, we really we really like the, the community and the science and to be able to bring technologies that may not have mass markets, that may not be of interest of interest capital, but to allow us to develop tools and technologies and reagents. Uh, it's, it's great to be part of this community. So thank you to everyone for, for joining and listening to this. And, and thank you, Christian, for, for providing this. So. Welcome to this webinar. My name is Amandine Roux, and I am a chemical research engineer at Polyvalent. And during this presentation, I will show you the unique properties of Crystal Force family for protein structure determination. Thanks to their supramolecular interactions and versatile protein binding sites, crystallophores can greatly facilitate your crystallization step. Crystallophores are lanthanide complexes based on terbium or lutetium and presenting complementary nucleation enhancement. Both are mainly adapted to soluble protein and complexes, but can also help you with membrane proteins. Crystallophores are really easy to use pre-screening tools. They allow you to duplicate your initial screens by directly solubilizing the product with your protein solution. Crystallophores are also presenting other advantages. For example, it can help to induce different crystal forms and to improve crystal quality. For pre-screening use, two methods are possible. The first one is to add directly the protein solution on the crystal of powder and to mix it before the screening. 
The second possibility is to dissolve the crystal ore into the protein buffer and ask for a 1 plus 1 plus 1 screen with addition of the protein solution first, then the crystal ore solution, and finally the precipitant solution into the drop. Thanks to crystal ore, you can maximize your screen. Indeed, it will help you to generate new crystallization conditions even where there is none with a native protein. On the figure, unique hits with crystal four are in blue, and so they represent a large proportion of the total number of hits. In extremely favorable cases, crystal ores may induce fast nucleation only a few minutes after mixing the protein solution, forming a white or cloudy suspension which tends to be micro or nanocrystals. In this particular case, this high nucleating effect can now be controlled by dissolving the crystal of our powder in a 10 millimolar sodium bicarbonate solution prior to the addition to the protein solution. By doing so, a clear suspension should be observed and the nucleation should lead to nice crystals during screening. Moreover, crystallophores can also be used as experimental phasing agents to facilitate the structure determination process. The complexes contain a lanthanide atom, terbium or lutetium, that presents a huge anomalous signal, three times larger to the one of a selenium atom. This anomalous contribution remains important even on an X-ray ohm source. Crystal of ore can be used as experimental phasing agent directly on native crystals. Our protocol for phasing is as simple as for the crystallization protocol. We have checked that crystal of ore compounds are compatible with most of the cryoprotectants conventionally used. To prepare derivative crystals with crystal of ore, you just have to add 10 microliters of your cryoprotectant solution to exophore and then suck your crystals during the cryoprotection step for a few minutes. Here are some structures served by crystal force users. As you can see, crystal force are also efficient on large protein complexes. To conclude this presentation, we would like to remind you the take-home message. Crystal ores are unique complementary tools that can be used as pre-screening agents to solve your crystallization issues. They are also powerful experimental phasing agents which may highly facilitate your structure determination. Both crystal of four properties can of course be combined to increase the efficiency of your crystallization process. All right, great. So that concludes the presentation. And so happy to have anyone ask any questions that they are interested in. So you're welcome to unmute uh, and you're happy to share your videos as well, uh, anyone willing. And uh, from there, uh, if you have a question, you can uh, either uh, just let me know or I will look at the chat box and give everyone just a minute. All right, uh, and so uh, I have a question from Blaine, and Blaine, you're welcome to, to just ask your question if you'd like. Um, okay, sure. Um, so I was curious, have these been tested with nucleic acids, with um, like DNA and RNA? Uh, well, uh, I must confess that uh, up to now, we never try with uh, nucleic acids, in fact. Uh, uh, from a chemical point of view, they are, should be okay, probably, but uh, we we never try with uh, nucleic acids. Okay. And I think in general for the technology, we've tried to bring it to market at a price where we understand that there's a lot of space that needs to be explored and researched and that uh, to cover all of that space, we wanted to make it at an accessible price point. And 
Uh, so, so, so Blaine, obviously, I, I, I know that you're excited to try new technologies, so do feel free and we'd love to hear how it works out should you decide to do so. Uh, so we have a couple of other questions. So this question is about, I believe, the origin. So what was the what was the trick? What is what was Crystal of Four's trigger? Yeah. So I may answer to this one. So actually, uh, as I was explaining when I arrived in the in the in the group here, the the work was mostly on the the preparation of internet complexes for their phasing properties. So the idea was. Uh, initially to co-crystallize the, the um, concentration, I mean, uh, solution, um, I mean, co-crystallize the protein and in the condition of crystallization, we are putting a, a quite a high concentration of lanthanide complexes. And so in the end, uh, we were hoping for having co-crystal of the lanthanide uh, complex with the protein. And so we, we had some success with the uh, trisipicolinate uh, complexes and we were looking for uh, complexes that has um, higher stability in the crystallization medium. So uh, meaning not uh, self-crystallization of the complex or dissociation of the complex uh, in a medium that are already charged in a different uh, cation. And so we, we went for um, a structure based around a macromolecular uh, platform. Uh, but uh, it was not so soluble. So my, my work at the beginning was just to develop something with a high solubility and stable. And the problem was that when the, the PhD student of Eric actually tried the first time to, to make this kind of co-crystallization, he, he told us, I don't know what's going on, but each time I put this complex in presence of uh, lysozymes, it was a uh, uh, lysozyme at this time, he told us, uh, I always have precipitation of crystal in my uh, appendix, so uh, there's something wrong. And we were like, no, no, I think it's pretty good. And so we, we start to look for other example of protein. We tested uh, for three years on, uh, on different proteins to be really sure that it was not something really specific to one particular protein. And so we, we really realized that it was uh, uh, general property of this uh, complex. And so that was the first generation of uh, crystal four. And uh, since then, uh, we we are trying to improve it to find new structure to to get a better, better, better results. Yeah. Great, thanks. Uh, the next question is, which kind of interactions proteins or crystal four have been observed? Yeah, so uh, actually the, 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 big issue, the big question is that, uh, yeah, we so far, uh, the interaction uh, we are sure of uh, has been observed in the, the crystal. So it's uh, due to the, as we can obtain uh, things to the, the phasing property of the lanthanide the structure with uh, quite a high resolution, we are able uh, also to, to see the structure of the complex in the binding site. And so the thanks to Eric and uh, the structure we had, we were able really to identify different kinds of interactions. So basically we, we have all the interaction that can be expected in between uh, uh, this kind of complexes and protein, meaning that um, the complexes is cationic, is a coordination, the ligand has a coordination seven around the lanthanide and uh, a full coordination of a lanthanide, it's uh, normally nine or 10. And so as a cationic uh, molecule, it interacts uh, pre firstly with uh, ion ion anionic residue like glutamate, aspartate, and actually you can have direct coordination of the carboxylate on the lanthanide. But uh, actually there's also hydrogen bonding that happens between uh, cationic residue with the, the, the carboxylate residue on the complex, so with uh, arginine or lysine. And uh, the, actually also the, the microcycle is quite hydrophobic. So you can form interaction with uh, tryptophan or uh, tyrosine. And so that's, um, we, uh, we had some nice example where one single complex was able to form three different interaction with three different protein to really be uh, like a, a, connect, a connection in between different protein at the uh, crystal state. And so the big deal is now to understand where the nucleation property is coming from. 
And so the, the, we, we have to understand the, the interaction we have in solution because uh, sometimes even in presence of a huge nucleation effect, we don't have uh, an occupation site with a huge occupation. And so we, we spend now the last years to try to understand in solution what's all the interaction solution in the complex and the proteins. That's uh, quite complicated, but we are using different uh, methods like uh, ITC or uh, paramagnetic NMO. And so uh, the big deal is to get NMO when you have something that tend to crystallize the complex at a high concentration. So that's uh, the kind of issue we are dealing with, but uh, we are working on that. and. Uh, we already published um, in 2018 uh, uh, first publication on the different kind of interaction we have in between the complex and protein. And so that works mostly uh, with uh, quantum mechanics, but now we want to have really data to, to, to really uh, attest of what we are expecting in solution. Great. Uh, so it looks like we've got uh, quite a few questions and so I'll just go through them in order and try to group them together as best I can. But uh, if, if there's any redundancy, I apologize. Uh, so a private question was uh, for membrane proteins, are there steps that could be better to incorporate the, the polyvalent, the, the technology? So uh, just to answer, I see the, the question of Blaine. Um, I think there is one publication from Crystal for users showing that uh, they can get crystals in, in lipidic cubic phase. So it should be okay. Uh, on my side, I just tried to, to prepare some lipidic cubic phase with lysozyme just to check that there is no, no bad, uh, bad effect of uh, Crystal for. And it turns out that the the cubic phase was more easily prepared in the presence of crystal four. I don't know why, but it seems to be easier to prepare the lipidic cubic phase. And also we know that some users have got some crystal or just tried some phasing with membrane protein preparing detergent. So it so also should be okay. I also see the question about the pH range. Up to now, we have tested the things from 3.5 to 11. So the, the complex is quite stable. Okay. And so since, I, I, uh, since everyone can see the questions, um, Mark asks uh, if there are any chemical differences between the variants or are they different formulations? So, so this is just a matter of uh, quantity of product. Uh, we decided to uh, lower the quantity for pre-screening agent in order to limit the protein consumption. But for phasing, you require a uh, higher concentration of uh, crystal of four. And this is why the, the, the crystal of uh, contains a higher quantity of crystal of four. But uh, products, when they are taking the same uh, uh, name are uh, strictly the same. Okay, uh, great. The next question, um, what concentration is used during setting up trays? Uh, typically 10 millimolar of crystal of four. But of course, you can play a, a little bit between five and, and 20 millimolar of the, of the complex. It is the, the concentration range where we observe the best results in terms of nucleation. Okay. And if, if anyone did have trouble seeing the, the video or hearing it, uh, uh, happy to, we'll, we'll send an email follow up after this that will include uh, a link to the video as well as the, the slide deck. Um, Great. Uh, Blaine had an additional question. Uh, can the lanthanide variant tolerate one millimolar EDTA? Yeah, so actually we, we, are, we are doing such measurement to EDTA. We, we are trying to do some titration in order to, to know the stability of the complex. So the, the complex should tolerate this. Uh, I mean, in terms of, uh, um, I would say, uh, um, uh, the, 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 yeah, the, yeah, the competition between the, the components 
the, the kinetically the complex should be quite stable. I don't say that uh, if you keep these complexes one month in EDTS solution, you will not totally uh, decorporate the terbium from the complex, but at the crystallization time scale uh, for uh, days, it will be uh, clearly uh, stable. But um, yeah, we, we did some measurement to check uh, if the complex was stable enough for weeks and uh, it seems the case, yeah. Great, the next question, uh, how many complexes would typically bind to a medium sized protein molecule? Depend on the protein, <laughs> of course. Uh, <laughs> I would say uh, in terms of nucleation, uh, what we can see afterward, uh, I would say from two to 10. It okay. depends also on the oligomeric uh, state of the, of the protein of interest and so on. In terms of phasing after uh, soaking, I would say that our, our record is something like uh, 50 or 60 uh, complexes bind on the large complexes. And we get, of course, the structure. OK. Uh, and so we've got two additional questions about the solubility and uh, stability, one from Bray, uh, Blaine. Um, how is the solubility of the crystal force in the presence of high peg concentrations, MPD or two molar? Um, it's, uh, there is no problem, at least. I think, uh, again, if we just uh, speak about uh, our records, uh, we have some crystals obtained in, I would say, 40% of MPD. We have no problems. We also try some protein crystals up to three molar of ammonium sulfate, so no problem at all. And in, in terms of PEG, we never observe any problem with the, with the molecule. And about okay. the, if I jump to the next question about the okay. agents, uh, I would say, uh, I think we, we have some collaboration and some of our collaborators have some TCUP and DTT with their protein. And again, we never observe some uh, troubles and, and so on. But of course, sometimes depending on the, on the composition of uh, the crystallization medium and, and the presence of such molecule, we can observe sometimes some uh, separation, the decalation of, the, of the, the terbium, but we have nice results where even if the complex is no more entire, we have still some binding of terbium that uh, induce nucleation and so on. And, but we don't know how it happens. Again, everything goes in, in solution. So may, up to now, the, the molecule is really versatile, clearly. Great. And, and then the, the uh, next question we have on to everyone is, can, can you use the, them as seeds without adding more crystal four? Of course. Of course, <laughs> you should okay. you should try that. And also, with with the as mentioned, with the when you observe the, this kind of surnucleation directly by mixing your protein solution with uh, with the crystal of of course, this kind of solution is perfect for for seeding. Well, if I can just add something, uh, one of our customers in in, in Austria has done. Uh, a combination uh, MMS and crystallophore, and uh, this is the this was the case when he, he got the, the more uh, crystals. Okay, great. Uh, we have uh, a couple of other offline questions that, uh, if, if you gentlemen have time, I'm happy to to ask. Um, so. Are there main advantages of lanthanide complexes when compared to, to other phasing agents? Well, uh, as mentioned in the video, the, the great advantage of the lanthanide atoms is the, their large anomalous contribution. I, I think that people should keep in mind that one lanthanide atom is able to phase a protein, which is more than a thousand of amino acids. So the, 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 the anomalous signal you can get from this complex is, is so huge that you can just imagine to, to tackle large systems. But you should keep also in mind that you, you have to 
to choose the energy of, for data collection precisely. This, this is really crucial to, to get the, the best from the, the crystal of four. One point that is crucial too for, for phasing is to avoid back soaking. Yeah. When you, you soak your crystal inside the, the, the crystal of four solution, Creo, which is a creo protection solution. Uh, don't do any back sucking then. Okay. Oh, great. Uh, oh, so another question has just come in. Do you have any feedback regarding protein inhibitor crystallization using crystal of four? Sometimes inhibitors crash the protein and prevent crystallization. <laughs> I would say probably that we don't have any example of such, but uh, in my team, we sometimes, I don't know if it will answer the question, but we, we use some protein uh, binding NAD and we never observe any trouble between the, the presence of NAD or some, uh, uh, some uh, inhibitors and so on. I, I would say, of course, Sometimes it will happen. I'm pretty sure of that, but it can also not happen. So I would say just maybe try. But you, you should also, as, as mentioned in the video, the great advantage of the, the crystal of and the fact that it provides new crystallization conditions is that you can find such new crystallization conditions maybe in the presence of your inhibitor and thanks to the molecule. So you have to to try this for, for this kind of uh, experiments. The interaction energy between the crystallophore and the protein is not so high. Yeah, so clearly the crystallophone, we never see example where the crystallophore is changing the shape dramatically of the protein. I mean, it's just a pendant chain that will move a bit, but uh, we, we are not changing the, the folding. We are not, uh, uh, if there's a strong interaction with uh, another molecule, for sure the crystal of four will not interfere in this one because uh, the, the interaction energy are really smooth. I mean, it's uh, a few kcal per mole, so it will not uh, yeah, imply any, any interaction you would like to see. And it will not destroy the biological unit, for example. We always observe the, when we have a trimer in solution, we always observe the crystallization of the trimer and not of a monomer, for example. Okay, great. Uh, and then uh, another question: uh, In the any increase in radiation sensitivity, radiation damage sensitivity with the uh, lanthanide complex? Up to now, no. I would say no. But I will try in the. I hope in the near future to to characterize this kind of thing by comparing things uh, more precisely. And I hope to provide a, a good answer to to blame. Great. And and. Uh, so I would encourage uh, anyone who does try the technology to, to provide as much feedback to, to all of us as possible, because the the like all things crystallography, the the space is vast the, for things to cover and things to try. And obviously, um, in development, can't do all the experiments, uh, but certainly uh, a lot to learn. And there's always a bit of trial and error when it comes to crystallization, um, a bit of bit of magic. Uh, great. Uh, so any other uh, key points or things to take into account, Christian or, or Eric? Uh, maybe just to remind that uh, very recently we observed some very uh, intense nucleation uh, phenomenon when using crystal for generating a micro nanol crystal directly after mixing the crystal for with the with the protein. It, at the first in instance, we can consider this as negative, but in fact, this is very positive. And uh, so we have worked hard recently to, to develop something, a new protocol that allows to, uh, to uh, mitigate this phenomenon yeah. and then to observe uh, big and uh, nice and uh, reproducible crystals. So uh, take care of our new protocol and uh, uh, take into consideration this new uh, new way to to, to, to produce uh, uh, screenings. Great. Uh, we have uh, one more question from Jeff. 
have you tried measuring the binding energy of different proteins to see if it to different proteins to see if it correlated with crystal growth? Could using the thermal denaturation screen to follow it could using the thermal denaturation screen to follow it in HT? Uh, or myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a very really good question. Uh, it's typically what we try. Yeah, for the last six months, we, we tried to, to, to find a way to, to correlate the, the, the behavior and solution and what we observe in, the, in terms of nucleation and what happened in the, in the crystal at the end. So it's a really good question. We work on it and we, we hope that we can uh, provide uh, the users uh, a good way to pre-screen uh, in solution what happened. That's a really good question. Okay, great. Well, I think that uh, covers most of the questions. If anyone has additional questions, as I noted, uh, uh, someone from the Mitogen team will be sending everyone who registered for the webinar an email. Uh, if you've not gotten one already, you're welcome to, to send them the questions that you have or to contact, uh, contact me directly. Uh, I want to thank uh, Francois, Christian, Eric, all of you for, for taking part and providing us with all of this in incredible information. Uh, we're happy to have the Crystal 4 is on our website in stock and available. We know that uh, there's a lot of research out there, researchers out there that are trying to get crystals or trying to solve structures. And so we're happy to have them available. Uh, if you have any additional questions, uh, do let us know. But otherwise, uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, too. Yeah. And if, too. And if you have any question, obviously, I mean, uh, the, our mail are available, Eric, uh, Christian, or myself. So don't hesitate. I mean, we are. Happy to help you also to use uh, this product. Yes, of course. Do not hesitate. All right, great. Well, we'll, we'll sign off then. Thank you, everyone, again. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, we will be in touch. Uh,